Hello there, my name is Dan from New Mexico Rocketry Reviews. Today we are going to be going over some code provided by Jared Heron for this model rocket test stand that will maybe improve our test stand. So let's get started. Hey everyone, just wanted to tell you about our Patreon real quick. At this point, our club is running on fumes and we don't have any funds left to do our, our cool projects and our awesome rocket reviews. As you know, we're crowdfunded, so we really need your support. For just $1 a month, you can get awesome benefits such as on-screen credit and weekly posts. So think about it, and if you'd like to take a look, check out the link down in the description. Also, make sure to subscribe. As you can see, only 10.4% of all our viewers are actually subscribed so we need your help. Once we get to the subscribe goal of 100, we will be releasing a video series on how to launch a weather balloon into high earth atmosphere and we'll be showing you test footage of that as well. So make sure to subscribe, but let's get back to the code and the model rocket testing. I'd like to say thank you for all the awesome support we got with our how-to video on making a model rocket test stand. And one day we got seven subscribers and we got a ton of good jobs from everyone all over. Along with that, a person named Jared Heron provided code for us that way we could improve our test stand. The problem with our test stand was that the serial monitor would give us the time as real time. For instance, if it was 10.58 p.m. here, then the serial monitor would actually give us 10.58 as a timestamp. So we would have to change the time based on how long the motor was burning. The new code that was provided will actually give us time based on when the engine actually starts, which will actually make the uh, data processing much easier. Along with that, the serial monitor layout is improved. That way we can just directly copy and paste the, um, the data points into Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. This makes things super easy. So once again, shout out to Jared Heron for providing this code for us. So today what we're going to do is we're going to upload it to the Arduino, show you how it works, and then we're also going to test it out and see how it happens. If you'd like to check out this code, there's a GitHub link down in the description so you can check it out and maybe download it for yourself. So let's get to how it works. All right, so here's a calibration procedure for calibrating this load cell for our test stand. So as you know, if we don't calibrate the test stand, we could put, uh, we could have like 200 grams of force coming from the engine and the load cell could read that as like 500 grams of force. So we need to properly calibrate this before we actually um, start the test. So first what we're going to do is we're going to upload this sketch right here to our Arduino and we're going to open up the serial monitor. Bam. All right. Double check the baud rate. And all right. So now it's giving you the value in grams. So first what we're going to do is we're going to get my uh, 177 gram iPhone. Let's place it on there and let's see what the serial monitor reads. So it's reading 209 grams. And that is obviously wrong because this is 177 grams. So that means we're going to have to change this calibration value. So there's actually going to be some math involved to do this. So what we're going to do is this. So we're going to get the, um, you can see it on the screen here, output value that we got here, which is 209, divided by this calibration value right here, that's highlighted, divide the output value, 209, divided by the um, calibration val value right here. You get that answer, right? And let's say that answer is X. So now you get the actual weight, which is 177 grams, and divided by X, right? And that means you have a number. Now we need to find the difference between that new number and our old calibration value. So we just do that new value minus 353.33, and we have that difference. And now we just add that difference to our current, current um, calibration value. Sounds complicated. I put a link in the description that explains it all for you. So let's do that. So 209 divided by uh, 353.33 is going to be 0.5915. Now um, 177 is the actual weight. That divided by 0.5915 will be uh, 299.23, about there. And then um, 
299.23 minus 353.33 is going to be 54.09. That plus 353.33 is going to equal a total of 407.428. So let's try that out. Upload, open the serial monitor, bam. Place our weight on there. After it reads zero, all right. So it's 180, so that's still slightly off, right? So we're going to repeat this procedure that we just did to get a better calibration value. The three grams is slightly off. So, our, so we'll do this one together. So we have our output value is 180. We divide that by our current calibration value, 407.428. We get 0.441795851. And now we get our actual weight, which is 177, divided by the answer we just got. We're going to get 400.637533. Now we're going to get our, our current calibration value, 407.428, right? And subtract what we just got, 400.637. We get 6.790. Now we just add what we just got to our current value, 0.428, and we get 414. 414.218. 218. So we're pretty much just refining the load cell amp a bit more and more at each time. Upload. And if you use exact values, you should actually get this first try, but I'm just like slightly round, rounding here for the purpose of the video, so I'm gonna have to do it twice. But we get there eventually. So I'm going to update the code sometime with um, with new code that'll actually find the do all the calibration value math for you. So you're just going to enter the weight of your calibration weight into the um, serial monitor, and it'll do all the math for you. But till then, just showing you how this is done. So we here's the final moment. Fingers crossed. 177 gram iPhone onto the load cell reads 178 point something. So one gram difference, not a big deal. I think that's good enough for now. So now we just copy this value, control C. Now we're going to open up the new sketch. This will, this is what we're going to use to actually measure the weight the thrust of this model rocket motor. So now we're going to scroll down, we're going to change this calibration value right here, control V, and now we're going to upload this. Now that it's done uploading, control shift M, bam, we have the serial monitor open. Now it says press G and enter to continue. All right, so what do we have right here? Um, so what this is showing you is on the first column it's showing you how many uh, seconds have elapsed. Second column is newtons, the, the amount of weight on the scale in newtons. And third column, I don't think it really matters, so we're just gonna disregard that for now. So right now it's reading zero newtons, which is correct. We put my one, 177 gram iPhone on there, and it's reading about like 1.75, 1.74 around there. So let's see if that's correct. Let's search up newtons to grams. And now we, we're getting 1.75 around there, maybe one point. So 178 grams, so that's correct. We have that all. So uh, once this finishes, um, once the, the um, test is finished, we just press reset on the Arduino. And as simple as this, we just, we can just copy and paste all these values right into Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. So how would we use this on the field? So before we open or upload the code, we have the motor in there with the ignition clip. Make sure you do not have the safety pin inside. And then um, we upload the code with the right calibration value for calibrating carefully. And then we would open the serial monitor and then we would start the countdown and then start the serial monitor. And then we have it there and we can just copy and paste into Excel. So the calibration um, took much longer than um, our previous code, but 
It took like an hour 30, like two hours to actually um, get the data compiled from our previous code. So this will be a lot faster. So thanks to Jared Heron for um, helping us out with this code. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. All right, so make sure you only, with this certain test stand, make sure you only use SD's motors. And the reason being is if you're using experimental motors, if it explodes, PVC shrapnel going everywhere, that's not good. So just use off-the-counter motors with the, this test stand. Um, card in the upper right-hand corner on how to make your own test stand if you haven't seen that already. So what are the differences between the code um, provided by Jared and the code that we use from our test stand? So with our test stand, the calibration procedure is much easier. You just place the weight on there. In case of an iPhone, we, we place a 177 gram iPhone on the thing, on the load cell, and then we enter the weight into the serial monitor and it does a calibration for you and gives you a calibration code. In the case of Jared's code, the calibration procedure is a bit more difficult with uh, math involved, but the copying and pasting immediately, just copying and pasting the uh, values from the serial monitor that we got into Google Sheets or um, Microsoft Excel is way easier. Um, personally, for me, it took me about two and a half hours to find the um, averaging stuff out and finding the correct times for the from the data from our code. While with this um, code that Jared just provided us, we did it in under like 30 seconds. So this is definitely a lot better and faster, but we're definitely going to make new improvements to it to make the calibration um, a lot faster. And as we keep going, we're just going to keep improving and um, finding the ultimate code. And then we're just going to let you know what's going on our way. Make sure to check out our Facebook page to know about all the updates that are going on. So, if you liked the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. That way we can get to that goal of 100, so then we can finally get to building a weather balloon and showing you how to do it. Also, please consider donating to us on Patreon. We really need that support to keep going. Um, link is down in the description if you're interested. Also, big shout out to Jared Heron for giving us that awesome code. Other than that, have a great day.